Hello and welcome back to the channel 55 Degrees North. Today I'm on the quayside in Newcastle on this sunny September afternoon. So I'm going to be looking at the seven different bridges that connect Newcastle with Gateshead along this stretch of the river. As we move along the path I will be having a look in more detail of the bridges as we go along. Starting off at the Redger Bridge as we make our way down the path past the other bridges finishing at the Gateshead Millennium Bridge. So starting at the Redger Bridge, not as famous as the other great bridges linking Newcastle and Gateshead, but has always played a vital part in the local transport system. The present bridge is the third on the site. The first opened in 1871, the second was a reconstruction in 1901 and the third was built in 1983 and was built just 25 metres east of the old bridges. Work to replace the second crossing began in 1980. The third bridge is much different to its two predecessors. It is a pre-stretched concrete structure with a central span of 160 metres and two side spans of 100 metres. So including its approaches, it's a total of 897 metres long and 15.8 metres wide. The bridge was designed by Mott, Hay and Anderson, the same company who were responsible for the design of the most iconic bridge which crosses the river, the Tyne Bridge. The two concrete piers were fluted to create the impression of lightness. The bridge was opened in 1983 by the Princess of Wales and cost around £15 million. So as I move down to the King Edward Bridge, I'd like to tell you a little bit about 55 degrees north. The channel mostly based in the northeast of England, especially Newcastle and Gateshead and surrounding area. Looking at the history and culture of the area, with a few travel videos thrown in for good measure when I'm on my travels, and history of that particular area, plus construction and restoration city update videos, and a few Newcastle United videos when I can win a ticket in the dreaded ballot. So if you like this sort of thing, consider hitting the subscribe button and hit the bell notification when I release more videos. So we are now at the Kennet with the Seven Bridge, known to generations of real women as the KEB. The Kennet with the Seven Bridge was needed at the time when rail traffic over the high level bridge was increasing, and the inconvenience of trains having to reverse out of the central station to continue their journey north could be no longer tolerated. The bridge was built for the North Eastern Railway Company and designed by Charles A. Harrison and constructed by the Cleveland Bridge and Engineering Company. Problems with the foundations meant plans for the girder span at the gates of side were changed and stone arches were used instead. The three Granite River piers and massive steel lattice girders carry the four railway tracks. The viaducts on the south side are red sandstone. The new bridge, together with the high level, completed the loop railway tracks using both sides of the Tyne, making train movements easier. Work commenced on building the bridge in 1902 and the bridge was opened by King Edward VII on the 10th of July 1906, but not brought into regular use until October the 1st. The usual method of testing with several locomotives crossing the bridge was used. So now onto the Queen Elizabeth II bridge, which carries the tiny Mere metro between Gateshead and Newcastle over the River Tyne. The line has a tunnel on either side of the river and only emerges into the open air as the metro crosses the bridge. The bridge was developed as part of the tiny Mere metro system for which it was purpose built. It was designed by WA Fairhurst and Partners and constructed by Sanitation Construction Limited and the Cleveland Bridge Engineering Company at a cost of £4.9 million. The two sections of the bridge were built simultaneously from each bank and eventually met in the centre. It was officially opened by the Queen Elizabeth II on November 6, 1981, nine days before regular metro services began. And now onto the high level bridge, which is a road and railway bridge. It's considered the most notable historical engineering work in the city and was built by the Hawkes family from 5,050 tonnes of iron. It was designed by Robert Stevenson, the son of George Stevenson, to form a rail link towards Scotland for the developing English railway network. A carriageway for road vehicles and pedestrians was incorporated 
to generate additional revenue, the main structural elements are a tight cast iron arches. The height of the railway sits about 120 feet above the River Tyne. A double deck configuration was selected because of the road levels on the approaches and to avoid excess width on the foundations which a side by side arrangement would require. The deck width was implied by the useful roadway width plus the width of the structural members which give the railway deck the width of three trucks. The foundations were to be difficult because of the poor ground conditions in the river and this ruled out an old masonry structure so a cast iron or wrought iron was used for the superstructure. The bridge was built between 1847 and 1849 with the first passenger train crossing the bridge on the 15th of August 1849. Then Queen Victoria formally opened the bridge on the 28th of September of the same year. The London North East Railway charged tools to use the road crossing. A pedestrian paid a half penny and the crossing was open from 5am until 6pm. Although from June 1871, 24 hour access was made available. Around 1880, a horse bus service was operated across the bridge, with the fare being a half penny, the same as a pedestrian tool. On the 10th of May 1937, the tools on the road crossing were removed. Newcastle and Gates and Councils paid the London and North Eastern Railway £160,000 to end the tools on the bridge. Now moving on to an engineer marvel of its time, the Swin Bridge, which sits between the high level and the Tyne bridges. The bridge was built to allow ships to sail upstream to the William Armstrong Works on the banks of the River Tyne. The bridge has a cantilevered span with a central axis of rotation able to move the full 360 degrees to allow vessels to pass on either side of it. The hydraulic Swin Bridge was designed and paid for by William Armstrong himself. Work beginning in 1873, it was first used for road traffic on the 15th of June 1876 and opened for river traffic on the 17th of July 1876. At the time of construction, it was the largest Swin Bridge ever built. The construction costs were £240,000. Hydraulic power is still used today to move the bridge and is derived from electricity driven pumps. These feed a hydraulic accumulator sunk into the shaft below the bridge. The water is then released under pressure which runs the machinery to turn the bridge. The mechanism used for this is still the same machinery originally installed by William Armstrong. So now to the most iconic bridge which crosses the river, the Tyne Bridge. Construction of the bridge started in August 1925 using shipbuilding techniques by local shipyard workers and was regarded as a prototype for the construction of the Sydney Harbour Bridge which was completed four years later although work started first on the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The Tyne Bridge was designed by Mott, Hay and Anderson and was comparable to the Sydney Harbour Bridge version. These bridges derived their design from the Hellgate Bridge in New York City. At the time of its construction, the Tyne Bridge was the world's largest span bridge. The Dome and Lawn Company were the main building contractors. And despite the dangers of the building work, only one worker, Nathan Collins, a father of four and a local scaffolder from South Shields, died in the building of this structure. The Tyne Bridge's towers were built of Cornish granite and were designed by local architect Robert Burns Dick as warehouses with five storeys. But the inner floors of the warehouses in the bridge's towers were never completed and as a result the storage areas were never used. Lifts for the passengers and goods were built in the towers to provide access to the quayside. They are no longer in use. The bridge was completed on the 25th of February 1928 and officially opened on the 10th of October by King George V and Queen Mary, who were the first to use the roadway. The autumn ceremony was attended by 20,000 school children who had been given the day off. Upon opening, the bridge carried the main A1 trunk road. Following the opening of the Tyne Tunnel in 1967, however, 
the A1 was diverted to the east and the road became the A6127. Following construction of the new Newcastle Western Bypass, the A1 moved again. The bridge was redesignated as the A167, which it remains today. The bridge deck carries four lanes of traffic, two southbound and two northbound, and has a speed limit of 40 miles per hour. In 2012, the largest Olympic rings in the UK were erected on the bridge. The rings were over 25 metres wide and 12 metres tall and weighed in excess of 4,000 kilograms. This was in preparation for Newcastle hosting an Olympic football tournament and the Olympic torch relay in which Bear Grylls zip wired from the top of the arch to gates at Keyside. The bridge is currently undergoing a four-year £40 million restoration programme in preparation for its 100th birthday in 2028. And now onto the newest bridge to cross the River Tyne, the Gated Millennium Bridge. The bridge was constructed to fulfil the foreign main design constraints. The bridge must be at least 4.5 metres, 15 foot above river level during high spring tides and when closed. Nothing must be built on the quayside at Gateshead. The deck must have no more than a 1.20 degrees of a slope to allow disabled access. The bridge consists of two steel arches and a deck which acts as a pedestrian and cycle path and a support arch. The bridge was designed to be as light as possible to allow for easy opening and closing. So the two arches are lighter towards the centre span than at the hinges. The pedestrian and cycle deck is a parabolical shape with a 2.7 metre 8.9 foot vertical camber. It is divided into two separate paths on different levels for different modes of transport, separated by a stainless steel hedge with seat areas and steps. The supporting arch is also a parabola design in such a way to match the shape of the Tyne Bridge upstream. The two arches are joined together by 18 suspension cables which provide stability for people crossing the bridge. The bridge opens using a tilt mechanism so it is commonly known as the blinking eye bridge as when it opens it looks like a blinking eye. The bridge opened to the public in September 2001 and cost £22 million to build. Its foundations are dug 30 metres into the riverbed to anchor it down. Each opening and closing takes approximately four and a half minutes and is powered by eight electric motors. So that concludes this look at the seven bridges that cross the Tyne. Please let me know in the comments what is your favourite bridge and if you've not already done so please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that bell notification when I release more videos. See you next time on 55 Degrees North.